day of the move. Beep. And so it begins to resume. Back to the place I went to not too long after it all began. A1, round two, witch.tv. Beep. 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 So having a lot of good minute and a half of things to sink in. Hello. Welcome. It's here. On oh, multiple levels of one, two, like beep. Beep. Panel lose. I've changed streaming hosting providers where for quite a while, including most of the while that uh, many of my current viewership are probably familiar with my work. I've been doing streams on Hitbox.tv, which is no longer even Hitbox.tv, rebranded uh, just recently, yeah, Smashcast.tv, Smash Mouth, Smash TV, Cast Smash dot Mouth. Video streaming service. A change that was coincidentally timed very near when that already like decision to move had occurred many months before that. Where I was on Hitbox at all because many years ago. Beep. When streaming was much more young and raw and strange and different. Beep. Which was not so good. It was very widely used already even Beep. three years ago. But on the tech side of things it had a very long list of problems. Not that it does not continue to have problems today. That's Every software has problems. No perfect software exists. Any digital platform of any sort. Computers are terrifyingly complex machines that very quickly went beyond our capacity to understand. But yeah, back then, Twitch was more so possessed of many flaws, including flaws that had very recently emerged, like back in those days you would get like a good 30 seconds to a minute of delay guaranteed between Beep when a thing actually occurred and when it actually reached your audience so like live interaction with with folks hanging about in the chat was essentially non-existent and if you had co-commentators guests and so forth they would be reacting to things you did a minute ago because they could not see anything at even like remotely close to as it was occurring in the live state Whereas at that time, Hitbox was able to very consistently port like 5 to 10 seconds delay at worst, which was quite serviceable. So at the time, it seemed like a great idea to migrate over there. The service was technically sound, the staff were pretty approachable and open to wanting to grow the community in particular. Like, 
Itbox was and remains a more Europe-focused streaming site, and so they we're very interested in reaching out into the North American you know, zones and trying to get people in these time zones. Beep. Yeah, streamed over there for a time, and it all went quite well and good, even right Beep. up to the end, aside from a few, few like acute spikes of weird technical shenanigans. But for the most part, Hitbox kind of stagnated Beep. or a little bit receded in quality as a provider, whereas Twitch, over those intervening three years, fixed most of what was wrong with it, and then also on the side, innovated in a bunch of ways. They really got on the game and fought to try and remain competitive and powerful and so forth. And that particularly came into its own like over this last year, just within the last six months with the advent of a whole bunch of things, how they've redone their subscriber system for partners and the advent of bits and then in particular other announcements like the affiliate program that they set up which is a really good structure for easing people in to monetize streaming yeah there's probably going to be some that are hiccups over the course of the stream that's that's how it goes many bits per many seconds but yeah, Twitch did a whole bunch of innovating and restructuring and rebranding and advancing as a company and as a platform at the same time that also I was making the journey from hobbyist to, wait, actually, the internet streaming is basically public access TV now and I could make, you know, subsistence income off of entertaining the audience that I've managed to draw. I have made it that far that I and you sitting over here we're not like we're like equivalent of regulars at a small club or some manner of other tiny venue that sort of scale of business at which it's feasible that wait actually yes this is this is business this can this can be job and this has potential to grow I have constructed a show people view and enjoy and are willing to pay to see inappropriate fractions and it's like all right you know sure Just, wait what actually people uh, what i'm funny i amuse what that hat what how many numbers where did those come from Good to glance over and see that I got that positioned about right to have the chat box just hovering over the dash. This accepts inputs while the window is not in focus, so I can Beep. technically, strictly speaking, fiddle around with other things while driving, but then don't drive distracted, folks. That's terrible. That's perilous. That puts yours and many other lives in danger. Real and virtual. I would say within a decade that we might see things about the internet streaming seep their way into other veins of media. It's like more broadly and in general. Look, the media as a whole is engaging in this transformative process of slowly drifting from old communication channels to the internet. Indeed, beep. So yeah, the Twitch got good, while Hitbox remained adequate or got worse. So as of, like, this is the point in the year when my contract goes with Hitbox that I had, I was a partner over there, went up for either renewal or not renewal, and I said, yeah, don't renew. I'm, you're no longer... I will no longer like, pledge exclusivity. Partnered up with Hitbox because at the time it was like, yeah, they were clearly like 
very much exactly what I was after. Top of the line, front of the pack, and they no longer have that advantage. So now I'm freeing things up. And unless Twitch does something to drastically sabotage itself over the next you know quarter or so, I will probably end up partnered here. In particular because then also, you know, all my various other folks who I affiliate with, Ty, my dog. To a lesser extent recently, but I do plan to do more stuff with like, you know, MC or Meeting List or other members of the crew, the assembly, the whole, you know, cluster that I am affiliated with. They're all back over on Twitch. Yeah, we're just here as a team and a community and an entity. To do more stuff interlocked with each other. Or media collaboration. That's another thing that Twitch fixed up and got working very well. There's a lot more tools on Twitch now for building interlinking of community. They have the whole they have the community settings that you can go into for making your stuff more searchable by categorizing it, and they have teams formable and they have auto hosting and all that other the integration that's wonderful for just passing audiences back and forth and cross pollinating groups of people to really Well, I mean, strictly speaking, everything you experience is the past. It takes, like, fractions of a second for information to go from your senses to the awareness layer of your brain. And then on top of that, the more fractions of seconds for all of these data to cross the world and reach you from me. Well put, Bloom. Where, naturally, I do want to continue to, as I go forward with other things, I try to keep, like, outright talk about serious heavy politics stuff out of my mainline content because that's that's distracting and un it's I'm, I'm trying to relax and let other people relax and be entertained when I'm doing other stuff I don't want to interrupt and weigh down and date a lot of other stuff that I do with external subjects I prefer for things that I build to stand alone and speak for themselves for the most part Beep. Don't worry about delving into those subjects while we're here, though, in this present stream, which may go about becoming a regular feature. We're in the desert limo, locked in for the long haul on the road to infinity. This is the place to kick back and be candid. Not too candid. Don't get, like, acutely, sharply topical. You settle down back there, or I will turn this car around, and there will be no endless pastel void for anyone. Where so, furthermore, what, what I'm actually tangibly doing here right now for the move, for the day, for the event. Uh, this is Desert Limo. It is a minigame in Roundabout. That being a lovely, charming little video work that was released on PC a couple of years back now, I do believe. By No Goblin, where the core game is a very interesting, like, movement puzzle deal about a limousine, a limousine driver, that is constantly spinning and trying to navigate this vehicle through environments while it's just continuously rotating, unable to stop. And as part of the ending for that, the character is eventually, as part of like an important like, moment for their growth, able to kind of settle down 
and drive straight ish. And they use that as a setup for so for one, this is included in the regular game as a thing you do under the credits, as the credits roll at the end of the game. That the character has finally sorta been able to drive in a vaguely straight line. And so they've used that to do this desert bus remake. And include that as just a standalone thing as well, as a bonus game with an online leaderboard. Which at the time that I reached it and saw that, I was, you know, immediately captivated by that is exactly the kind of stupid thing I invest time into trying to do well. And so that two and a half hours there, that is how how much desert I did on the day that I finished streaming roundabout. Way back in earlier events. Two and a half of that. And so sometime later when I went and set up my Patreon page, which, actually, coincidentally, this, this, this swirl in the roundabout logo kind of serves as a nice stand-in. I could, I could have thought to throw more shilling objects onto the HUD here, but for now I'm going to keep it very light. But yeah, so they put in this very relaxing, subtly different, and in, that w in those ways more challenging Desert Bus variant in here. And so when I built my Patreon page, I put in at one of the funding goals of at the time, I did not think anyone would get anywhere near this, so I put in a dumbass joke challenge, and naturally, eventually the number went up high enough to, to surpass progress bars, because that's what happens when you give people a progress bar that leads to it. Yeah, as far as can be foreseen, the Twitch move is permanent. There aren't other competing services that are going to rush up here and distract me unless they do so with enough intensity to, like, convince the rest of the crew to also migrate. Which is where the team is, and now I have rejoined the team. So yeah, this, so as a, I don't expect I'm ever going to reach this goal on my Patreon, I put in, I mentioned that at the time, of, at the time that I first came up with the goal, I was ranked, like, 13th with that time, or something very close to that, 13th or 18th somewhere sub-twentieth in the world with that time, and pledged that at that level I would start trying to claim the world record, which at the time was, I think, nine hours or so? And sometime later when the goal got close, I went and updated that I had fallen behind to, like, twenty-second, as several other people had put in the stupid big times, because there is, in particular, there's an achievement for doing this for eight hours, because also, flavorfully, this drive is the t characters are leaving the country, they're driving from where they were to Mexico, and that takes, that is like an eight-hour drive in the real world or so. So there's an achievement for actually driving down this desert highway for long enough that you would have reached Mexico. And then beyond that, there's the prestige of being at the top of a desert bus leaderboard. So at, some, at, at the point where the goal was actually hit, I updated it to the, that I had fallen to around 22nd. And that the new record was just a little bit over 10 hours. And I pledged that I would, that was my rival. I would destroy them. Though, as you're now able to see here on the screen, since then, that record was yet further surpassed by Klopfer there with their 13 3 eight and a half, which that is starting to push into I'm not sure I'd be able to do that that's health hazard territory that's it would take like extensive like bio planning and physical training to feel like I would be able to commit to a 13 hour desert bus without putting myself in some degree of health risk That were cheating, which I would not reduce myself to. Beep indeed. So what I am committed to, though, is from, like, past experience of other big streams I have done, I could do the 10-hour. I am confident and healthy and comfortable with I could do a 10-hour marathon stream. Like, quick fest, the final leg of that was 9.5 to 10-hour? That's feasible. When I'm into and attached to something, that can happen. I've done it before and could do it again. 
and I don't have expectation that this will be the run, necessarily, right here on launch day. But, since that goal was hit, and I had not yet streamed any attempts, and here we are on an important, if awkwardly placed, important day for- and yeah, like, when I am very into other things on my schedule, I very easily overrun into outlandish spans of time as well. It's just a question of how engaged I get and how locked in I am to a subject. Yeah, in its own way, it's a little surprising that there's only a 13-hour record for the roundabout desert bus. I believe the world record for standard desert bus is, like, two days. Someone managed to do that. Like, actual physical Sega CD desert bus, or emulation thereof. Then again, actual desert bus is subtly different. This is harder. This is the true desert bus. Like, Desert Bus Classic is, well, for, it's an, for one, it's digital control. It's a D-pad. Whereas here, we have access to analog control. So there's actually, like, at various points, there is, like, an exact position I could feather the stick into that would just hold me stable. And also, I think, furthermore, like, I haven't actually played any amount of vanilla Desert Bus, so I can't verify for sure if that's the case, but... I believe it is the case that in Desert Bus, the drift that you have is the bus sliding sideways over time. It just laterally drifts toward the edge of the road and you have to, correct, have to compensate and correct for that. Whereas here in Roundabout, the limo is rotating rather than sliding. So what will happen is when I'm very close to neutral, you can see and feel there, when I'm close to the neutral position, the drift is slow, but then the farther I let it get out of whack, it escalates. Because the limo is turning, rather than sliding. Hundred and fifty nine is that for one person, though, or is it for a team? Because there have been, like, relay race desert bus marathons for charity, where they pass off the controls to different people, and those can go indefinitely. That can go for as long as you have fresh crew willing to sub in and keep the bus running. Beep, Beep indeed. But yeah, so here you have rotation. So your drift is non-linear. Your control of your drift is more fine-tuned because it's analog control. And to compensate for the fact that you could wedge the stick into a position where you have equilibrium, Every so often, the direction that you're spinning reverses. So you do need to stay on the ball. You do need to be, at least that slightest bit, paying attention. Because otherwise, if you, like, set it, if you just kind of hypothetically were able to lock the stick in the exact position, just have, like, I don't know, some clay, a rubber band, just something to achieve that exact input that cancels things out, That'll be good for, like, two minutes, and then the road will flip, and then you'll crash anyway. Unless you're actually there to correct. Like you can see here, I've briefly established equilibrium. Yes, I'm, I'm sliding a little left. Yeah, folks, as much as it is amusing to think of engaging in outlandish, overlong marathon efforts, those are actually hazardous to your well-being. Take care of yourself. Do not overstrain your form. Science does not yet fully understand why you sleep, but we know that it is important. Sleep regularly and for reasonable spans of time.
was driving the moving truck on over, huh? Oh, yeah. The long road to the future. Welcome. Hello. Hey. 25 minutes in, I've already done much of the preamble of the sensible regular explaining, and I'm starting to drift into standard conversation. Makes sense. Be good. At some amount of time in, I might reach into another window and apply music. For now, I am just allowing the road to be. It's a long, long road. And yeah, folks looking about, you would recognize that the announcement video that I made is assembled out of various extreme close-ups on bits of this. Also, furthermore, this is a, this is a filter that exists in games, a bonus option you unlock. This is 70s mode, where they give it this nice, aggressively pastel, washed-out, fuzzy color scheme. There is a more regular color scheme as well, I guess. I switched to this the moment I unlocked it and have never regretted it. Yeah. Theoretically, there's a normal color scheme, but who knows. There is the beginner palette you must escape from in order to ascend to the next level. The tutorial color scheme. Yeah, to reiterate, I do not have, I, I do not assert any claim that this will be the run and I will just do it in one and achieve 10 plus hour, having done nothing to like, you know, de-rust the advanced techniques of paying attention to this wiggling limo for 10 hours. Anything could or will go wrong in the process of transacting this limo. However, I am committed to the pursuit of greatness. I must destroy my rival, even if I don't win in the first film. Perhaps I fail the first attempt, become humble, and then retrieve greater levels of power. Only then overcome them, and develop a mutual respect for each other as fellow participants in the sport. Then we team up to defeat 13-hour Clubber Lang there. Makes sense. Only to then be mutually shocked and aghast when, like, the 40-hour, you know, Ivan Drago of Desert Bus shows up. Nine days. Beep. Perfect immortal driving machine. Beep indeed. Beep. But he had assisted driving technology that went into it. Mm hmm. You did it all natural. The battle of nature versus science. Uh, yeah, Twitch has its policy that you that you will be banned if you try to do a 48 hour or more continuous stream. in order to discourage people from marathoning themselves to death on their website, because that is not good, either for is, people or for business. It has tragically happened at least once, which is unfortunate. It is something to be dissuaded. Yes. Beep. I do things the long way as a joke, and I can say... Quite firmly and authoritatively, don't do that. That's not worth it.
Uh, yep, uh, regular schedule is going to pretty well immediately resume after today, just on Twitch instead. Every series I was engaged in, picking up where I left off, everything. Carrying on being archived on YouTube. Business as usual, just you watch live over here instead of over there. I have underscores in my name on this side. Yeah. The underscores add character, though. It is the more proper form. It is other places which are where I am constrained by the lack of punctuation. Correct. Yes. Desert bus on nine compact discs. But yes, per that goal, I am going to commit myself to pursuit of destruction of my rival of a 10 hour plus time, which upon accomplishment, I will consider that, you know, success. And if I am then further surpassed by others, that's, that is acceptable. That is honorable. That is, I've inspired others to step beyond their limits and achieve greater heights of idleness. There is prestige in being the giant that others stand on. It's true. With regards to patiently wiggling a limo down an endless highway. And then I have sort of the vague idea that I might, like, I'd, I'd like to acknowledge among the other things related to how I've done streaming and online content in the past up until now there's like a bit of a rhetorical bent and slant I've taken about being kind of opposed to a lot of standard structural things that go into streaming that I'm actually willing to relax on a lot of those and engage more in stuff per the noisemaker and the chat box have been here I'm willing to do more layouts I'm interested in doing more layouts and engaging in the audience I'm if I'm going to be doing this as a professional income stream, I'm very appreciative of the customer swarm that is out there and will acknowledge their presence and their value in making this an ongoing process. All right, nice. However, in pursuit of my own principles, I do want to aim to make it as unintrusive as possible. I'd like to keep things simple and crisp and to the point for the most part with regards to the noisemakers and the presence of other layout things. Of course. A chat box takes up a pretty good amount of space when you get down to it, and that's space that could be used for any number of things like football. Mm hmm. Drumming gang. This game, when it's appropriate, it's like that's. That's kind of thing, like in particular, it's like a part of the the community and the, the group has been developing and expanding and spreading out to other things. There are several like speedrunners who like you know primarily do speedruns as the, as their thing they do rather than more like LP oriented stream content that you would get from me or Ty or so forth, who are now affiliated with the group. And just kind of a natural thing out of them is because they already have a bunch of other layout for like you know their time management and the rest of their HUD. There is a natural space where their face can fit in that layout, and seeing them react while they're doing the same thing over and over again. You know, it's There are many different kinds of online video. There are times and places where seeing who is doing what will be relevant. And, you know, I've already, I've done face camera before. I just, you know, fucked it up a bunch with video settings to make void cam instead of regular cam, and so forth.
Though, usually, no. There's not a lot of times when anything about how I'm positioned... Or, yeah, like, Smite face cams from time to time, and he does that well. Once bits are enabled on this account, BitCup will be present frequently. I do like that as a little visual toy. Oh, yeah. And, like, on review, a lot of the stuff that I do is not at the full aspect ratio, so there is natural void space waiting to be filled by layout stuff. That'll all be subject to adjustment. And also, you know, as far as camera stuff, miniatures. Miniatures will be coming back. It's the warm season again. I can safely open windows and aggressively ventilate the room and wander the city buying supplies. You'll get arm cam. That's better than face cam. Hands cam. You can only get so much, re you know, relativity and emotion out of a face, but an arm, an arm's got it all. An arm can do anything with that kind. A of gesture is worth a thousand facial expressions. It's true. You can't do kung fu with your face. All Communicate the through the fist. miniatures are very much coming back. In particular, one of the things that had stalled out previous mini-building is I have ambitions for what I want to do with the M3 Lee that has been sitting there, partially incomplete, taunting me on my disc. Of, I'm gonna put LEDs in it. I'm gonna make it glow. I'm gonna make it pulse. It's just that, oh, it turns out you can only, like, buy strip LEDs in, like, reels of 50 meters at a time. Either I need to come up with a lot more uses for LEDs, or, as has become the case, reach the point where that's a reasonable expense to just buy a shitload of strip of light and know that I will eventually find uses for the rest of it. Just tank with underglow. And then also furthermore, complications for that is like, so with those strip LEDs, there's apparently not any that are like built to have like just a little like charge pack, just a battery pack that's a part of the strip. So that you could reasonably like just with a USB or something directly charge them and have them in position on the go. So one, I'm probably gonna have to do some modifying of the strip itself, some wiring, some electrical stuff to make it reasonably hooked to an external power supply while still being inside of the tank after it's fully assembled together. I'm gonna have to like carve it open and create a port through which to access the lights so that any battery that is installed can be changed out. All without compromising the rest of the structure. It's an interesting proposition. It's floating. And in response to all of the, those stalls, I started building the sop with, which then, that was cut short by, it was winter, and doing miniature stuff in winter, when I cannot, when it is not reasonable to toss open the window and fire up the fans and cycle all the fumes out of the room, that's not a good idea. Uh, for paint, I am using acrylics. It is more the adhesives that start to get really, really noxious once those are in action. Non-toxic cement is less toxic cement. Toxicity is a dose, not a substance. Get yeah, the glues. I haven't been I haven't needed to use any solvents to like unglue things, but if I did, those would be very dangerous. Wanna say you shouldn't ever put anything called cement in your mouth? 
Yeah, I think something that works called, out right. I think even if something was called edible cement, you should be wary about it. The move's been going 40 minutes now there, yes. Going well. Going forward. It's certainly been going. Yeah, I need my material safety data sheet for streaming studio, which... Yeah, you no, know, the thing that constrains the efforts is that as of this point, it's just... It has remained for years just my desk and its immediate environs, which are not particularly large. Where I'm living right now, I don't have, say, a garage or a shed where I could set up a camera and a workbench. Eleven team of black mages against Garula. Do you still have your ice rod? Did you burn your ice rod yet? Biker neighbor presumably parks his bike at his house, which is not mine, as he is a neighbor, not biker housemate, or I would call him biker housemate. And probably assert a pseudonym for them other than that. I would other it would be a regular name that I would gripe at them over that is not their actual name out of etiquette. I'd just be like, damn it, Jeff. Jeff Bikehaver. Jeff Bikeman. Up at all hours of the night biking about. So yeah, fighting Gorilla with Black Mage is feasible at level 11. Wear him down until he gets into his angry phase and then snap the rod. That will be enough to finish him off. There will be much time for discussion of Fiesta-related stuff. Fiesta is soon. Registration opens soon, and then you know, vaguely a month after that, the fest itself begins. Have powerful, vague plans for fest proper. And during this year's pre fiesta season, I am going to try out a run of the FF5 randomizer, Grand Cross. I've done a little bit of test sampling of that, and it looks pretty interesting. Yeah, Aria Randomizer, pretty good. And I think, in particular, due to a common thread that I anticipate will make the Grand Cross Randomizer good, is that they're, they're randomizers on games that are already about mixing and matching different builds to solve different problems. When the game is already designed around having a big menu of options and taking your pick, shuffling them around looking for synergies, mixing up the order that you get them in, it just creates a different platter that you're sampling from. Yeah. But probably still results in feasible solutions to your problems. Yeah. Just using different tools than you normally would because the ones you expect to get first might, well, statistically won't be where you're used to seeing them.
Okay, so I have this white mage that can dance, and its item command has been replaced with sword slap. And it equips bells. How do I use this to solve problems? Where that is the kind of stuff that the randomizer will give you. Taking the classes, shuffling up which ones you get by which crystal, what their what stuff they equip, what their innate command is, and what moves they learn for how much. The game then becomes about exploring what you can learn out of all these classes, searching for the tools that you need. Yeah, plan is to not randomize enemy stats. There has to be some kind of constant that serves as the structure that you measure your progress against, and so... Yeah. Your opponents, leaving those as they are, just the static challenge that now try to defeat them with weird backwards tools, that's the appeal. And also in particular as a fallback for the randomizer gets too rude, it still starts you in Freelancer, and it does not appear to change Freelancer at all. It's still bear class, same basic attributes, no move, and universal equipability. So uh, whatever falls into your lap, you'll still have a way to use it. That's maybe. good at least. Because then in particular, an interesting twist that it puts on it is you start as freelancers, but it will shuffle a different job into the freelancer slot on the job menu. So it'll be, say, starting off as freelancers, but have the option to become the mystery berserker. But if you choose to make someone the berserker, they cannot change back until you find freelancer again later from another gem. And then also as a fun additional touch to really add a bit of texture and flavor, another randomizer option that is in there is shuffle the color palettes on all the costumes of all the characters. So in addition to you're using the weird bizarro classes that it assembles, they are all wearing weird bizarro mixed up costumes to just visualize that yes, here is your green blue mage. Oh, things don't just become Technicolor messes if you had that going, though. From the samplings I have seen of it, it's reasonably alright. Yeah, folks, be careful about the robot. I've turned on all of its standard filters, caps, emotes, spam, links, and so forth. Be wary about using it the It will caps. conduct the slaps on the wrist. It is a machine. It knows only justice. An unfeeling machine desires nothing more than your death. But we'll tolerate you as long as you don't break the rules. Yep. Learn the subtle difference in frequency between the beep of joy and the beep of anger. Do not provoke the beep of anger. Robot is neither friend nor foe. It is the law. Officer Beepski will come down and you like a ton of bricks and there's very little you can do about it if you portray the law. Uh, that is actually a setting that I can dive into elsewhere. There are adjustments I can make to be sure that the robot or other moderatorial tools would have a chance to intercept statements before they even spawn into the text box. And hello. Welcome to Witnessing the Move.
the journey. The desert bus, which... I think this really in particular speaks to a new world experience. It's like a common cultural vibe. Felt by those who dwell here on the large continent, the sparse continent, the car haver continent. Where just it will very likely, if you live anywhere in North America, be part of your life experience that you have done a road trip. You yep. have experienced spending five days traversing the wasteland to visit that one uncle or a theme park or what have you. You can just drive for ten hours straight in a featureless wasteland and not see a single person. See a whole lot of corn, though. Ooh, boy. Corn for days. Corn is everywhere. Corn There's beyond unlimited, unlimited oceans of corn. Also, that is a nice addition again to the desert limo, that there is the other car on the road that is just always a bit ahead of you. It wavers slightly, but you never converge on it, and it never gets away. They're just the other person who's out here today. Maybe you drive through corn, maybe wheat, maybe trees, maybe just grass. I do not recall if this drive is meant to correspond to a particular real highway. I believe we are heading south from somewhere in California during the 70s. So that narrows it down to, yeah, roughly th there is a mountain out there somewhere that we will never reach. And an extensive supply of scrub grass and the occasional rock. Yeah. The natural resources of the United States of America. Scrub grass, rock, a mountain or two. Big silhouette of distant mountain. I've set up a full block of uh, basic notifications at this point, although until I'm affiliated or partnered, only two of those actually do anything. There's the follow beep, and then I have I have noises for hosts when those occur, though I haven't affiliated an image with either of those, and tip jar is active, in case anyone feels the, that the first hour of, of desert busing merits throwing some number of Canada dollar in the vat. It's there. It's active. I feel like you should be getting paid trucker wages, really. Mm. You know? As long as you make that 950, uh, 950 miles, you're good. Yeah, we can't turn around far enough while driving to see the cargo wagon that we're surely hauling. Yeah, well, you know, it's a sure. limousine. It's a passenger vehicle. We have, we have a crew. We have a human payload, surely. Oh, man. <laughs> That'd be miserable. Also comfortable in its own way, but being chauffeured, chauffeured for ten plus hours in the limo, and thousand miles of chauffeur, 
Yeah. Miserable for the driver. I think Only in, vaguely miserable. I think in the regular color scheme, you can actually see all of the dials on the dashboard and see that we are driving at a not remarkable speed as well. That we are only doing, like, 50, 60... Not the actual speeds that everyone in practice revs up to on these empty wasteland roads. Yeah. The de facto speed limit of no one will blame you as long as you're... You're vaguely in touch with the rest of the traffic around you. It's not speeding it if everyone does it together. Also, if until someone that. crashes and dies, then it's speeding. Yeah. Also, if there is even anyone around you, just don't fuck up. When you are this far from civilization, the sign is a suggestion. Although the the, the speedometers that catch your, uh, your license plate. Those are not suggestions. Those are not suggestions. Anywhere that they enforce by robot or by helicopter, or by robot helicopter these days, now that we live in the future. Yeah. In which case, this, those are the signs that say it's not a suggestion. Seriously, we have the meter up. You're on the record. We're counting this time. We're not gonna just turn the blind Wait. eye. We have the robot eyes upon you. They see all. Oh yeah, there was like a big speed limit crisis thing in the 70s. Near or alongside the fuel crisis. All those shenanigans relating to long distance, all forms of travel. It was mainly to just reduce the amount of oil consumption, it seems like. Yeah, there was... One of the incidents in the Middle East impacted fuel prices drastically. Right. Prices and supplies of fuel. Where it had previously been quite cheap and quite abundant, like aberrantly so. So you had a lot of excessive frivolous consumption, a lot of high-performance vehicles built during that time, because yeah, that's not a big deal. If you were just pulling down all of the crude, whatever, it's fine. But then, uh, uh, no, ah, uh, gee, we gotta, we gotta ease that back. It turns out it only really saved about 0.5 to 1% of fuel consumption as opposed to like 2.2 that they were expecting out of it. Mm. And I believe there has been multiple studies into just removing speed limits entirely from uh, like driveways and almost universally people drive safer without them. Yeah, that is kind of an interesting phenomena related to driving stuff and a bunch of other like fields of human behavior that the presence or absence of legalism versus like organically developed traditions of behavior can have interesting effects on behavior right the, the presence of an abstract rule that you believe in and trust to be accurate will alter how you behave versus if you're just kind of counting on your own vague judgment Beep.
Like, some real good drivers will come out of countries where there are a lot of motorists and not a lot of laws governing motorists. Because in order to survive as a motorist in the Thunderdome of commuting, you get right. good or you get crushed. And there's the one hour mark. There's 10% of goal and two fifths of personal best. Nice. We are well on our way to defeating our rival. Mm hmm. As remember, for this, I do not pledge that this is the run. Surely not. This is the de-rusting, the warm-up, the coming back out of retirement. Orbs remain good and pure. Beep. I don't recommend them. Shapes do not kill people. Wizards kill people with shapes. Beep. But only the wizards can use the shapes. Only the wizards can unlock the deeper potential of the shape. Shapes in the hands of ordinary people are docile. They are safe. They're kind of just worthless, though, to the average person. It's just, it's just a ball. It's just normal decorative. Person. Shapes don't have to do things. They can just be Orbs there. Orbs are not for decoration. Orbs will blast you wide open. The cautionary tales of orbs. orbs but yeah, emotes orbs. temporarily out of commission here on new service, new back to basic account for now status. Affiliate status is assured after a month of uptime of... We very easily will hit the you-are-not-a-robot level of engagement necessary for affiliate status. You already have the viewer requirement right now. So. I, had the, I had the follower requirement left over from the streams I did five years ago. Before the incident. incident. <laughs> oh my. I had enough followers from people noticing I have an account from when I show up on other things and be like, Oh, I should follow you. Oh, wait, you stream on that other service. Oops, never mind. Except now it's true. Congratulations, you played the long con. Now you're in. Yeah, and apparently with affiliate status, they're going to be adding to that at some point. One emote slot and the basic level subscription, so those might become active sooner than later. Beep. And then, depending on how well numbers ramp up over that month, we may be able to cut the line and move directly to more advanced interactions. Beep. Uh, yes, you should probably unsubscribe from the other side. If you want to continue watching things over there and want to continue using my pictograms from over there, when you watch things there, sure, I guess. The money still reaches me, but that is... Being left behind, that's my past. The old life that I don't carry any actual ill will towards... Towards Smash Mouth, not Cast V. It's a fine site, they're good people. The, the staff was always remained approachable and reasonable and... Fine to interact with. just I am no longer there, and neither are Beep. any of my affiliates that I know of anymore. I can't think of a single person, actually. That's the so Smash age is over. Yeah. 
all the image files that became emotes over there, naturally, I still have them. They're being used as emotes on my Discord that is accessible to patrons of the Patronon. Which is like a subscription, except I get an even larger cut. It, it just goes, like, practically directly. Ashed smash it. And yeah, so once I do have emote slots over here, those will be making their way back over and maybe joined by other new original creations as new gags emerge. Front of the list for things I will re-implement soon. Soon arrives first. Soon is very important. Soon is a powerful emote. Perhaps the most important of all. Soon, probably followed by Orb. The, the the Fiesta badge, I might have that switch to being an emote rather than my badge icon. I may come up with a new badge icon by the time that's relevant. Alright, in particular, I had the thought, wait, actually, like, yeah, I think Orb might migrate to being the badge icon, because there's the idea of different badges for different, like, durations that you've been subscribed uh, so I can have, like, a rainbow of chromatic orbs that move up the spectrum the longer someone has been here. Yeah, so you can start with just your basic deep red orb, and then it goes orange, yellow, and so forth. Yeah. Maybe a criminal Shinzi orbs. Superior orbs. Beep. Definitely as slots allow, which they will because there are gratuitous numbers of emote slots once you have a subscriber base. Uh, emote and picture of broken image link, those are coming back. Those are those are beloved to me. Just picture of a text emote and picture of a image that failed to load. Those are good. Those belong here. Those are on brand. Those are what you're here for. Indeed. Beep. I'll take the note. Thanks for Maddie, to Maddie, to producing for producing the animated form of that good dangling boy. That is the uh, motor trap enemy from FF5. Just uh, giving a bit of wiggle. Dangling wiggly boy. Congratulations on your democratic success. Good work. Beep. As citizens, it is your often boring responsibility to participate in your bureaucracy to some extent. Often boring, sometimes very inconvenient. Boring, inconvenient, but extremely important. Right. To participate in your respective body of government. Beep. I'm glad people are liking Xenogears. I am liking Xenogears to the degree that I like things. It has been a welcome addition to the, to like, 
during my own youth in my past. Ages ago. I never owned a PS1, so I got to, like, I skipped over this sizable block of media that, like, formed a lot of things about RPGs and people's opinions of RPGs. Right. And so it's been very interesting to dive back in there long after the fact as a grown, bitter adult and look over these things that my peers liked when they were dumb teens. Yeah, because we you made about a lot of what uh, was okay about them and what was terrible about them. Yeah, you made a lot of observations just about the entire era where games and things taking an extremely long time was vi viewed as a good thing back mm -hmm. in the day. Look how large they can be now. We're not yeah. confined to the cartridge. You can just have nine compact discs. What if a game lasted 40 days? I've been enjoying Xenogears quite a lot myself. I've never played it, and I have seen extremely little of it flat. So I'm functionally experiencing it the first time through this. Mm -hmm. My older brothers owned it on PlayStation 1, but I never saw them play it, and I never played it myself, so... You know, Gears also in particular is hitting another, like, thread that I enjoy from media retrospectives, where there's a lot of things that developed reputations for being deep or strange or incomprehensible or avant-garde that, from my experience, like, every time I have then gone and revisited one such thing as as a grumpy old man, and as a fan of the surreal and abstract, and like an armchair literary theorist, or if like there's a step beyond armchair in terms of being not formally versed but casually interested, like that extra step. In bed. Yeah, like haven't even gotten out of bed today, literary theorist. It has been interesting every time I go to one of those works of media and look it over and see relatively cleanly what it's going for and get a sense of like oh yeah this has a rep for being high symbolism because for games it's pretty ahead of the very very shallow curve Beep. and teens are dumb yeah. this is a thing you probably experienced as a teen and you were dumb if you're a team right now I hate to break this to you it doesn't feel like it at the time but you're really dumb You'll get over it eventually, but for right here and now, you dumb. Your brain hasn't fully finished developing yet. It'll get there, in a bit. It's trying. You're just in that awkward time between being a real- an actual child where everyone respects the fact that you're dumb, and before you're an adult, when people- You've managed to home. become clever about some things, but others you're still very not and you will not get there for a bit. Once you do, you will be able to like look back and realize, damn, you were dumb. If you've managed to go through much of your life without that moment occurring, stop and think about what that might mean. Yeah. But yeah, a bunch of things like, say, Evangelion, you know, on the subject of Xenogears, of, uh, hey, like, can you tell what this was made after, hmm? have a rep for being way out there and it's like okay yeah it ran out of money and couldn't finish the last five episodes but other than that the story is pretty there there's a bunch of things that are understated or left vague things can be vague when they're story elements yeah they're not spelled out in agonizing detail but a general impression is painted enough for them to serve a role in the story There's a bunch of elements that could bend one way or another, depending on interpretation, and guess what? That's a position that a work of media can fill. It can be flexible, it can mean different things to different observers, or multiple things to the same observer, depending on how you feel like reading it at the moment.
but yeah, like Evangelion, it's it's a giant robot story that is thematically a bunch of people who are depressed and don't know how to deal with it, and because none of them know how to deal with it, they can't even like try to help each other meaningfully either. And you know, every time they try, they kind of fuck it up a little bit. For sure. And like, yeah, that's the story. Reflecting on that, on frailties and flaws, and ways that we all remain dumb throughout our entire lives. And it's like, man, we can recognize how we're bad at this and still not fix it, even when we notice it. Isn't that weird? That's weird. Huh. I look forward to when Xenogears presumably kicks it into the higher gears and starts trying to do the weird stuff. Yeah. For now, it's just been very aggressively indecisive and disorienting in otherwise ordinary sci-fi plot beats. Yeah, I had a discussion last night with a friend of mine who asked me, "Do you have you followed the plot of the game so far? And I have. I have. It's not been that hard to follow or anything so far. But it has made me realize... While I understand everything that's going on in the plot, I have no idea where we're doing any of it. Yeah, it kind of hasn't established a main hook that's supposed to be dragging you forward. It's introducing a bunch of world building, but not latching them on to much of a main thrust to motivate it. Yeah. We're kind of just following Doc around and he's doing stuff. Dog and Bart. Doc Bart Adventures. 100 years. DocandBart.com. I saw out of the corner of the eye someone missing front mission. I'm going to do more front missions as well in the stream queue. Like, in particular, there's, like, uh, the DS remake of the first one. That's pretty good. I'll probably play that as a version to do of the first. As one, it's an official English translation of the regular first game. And they added a bonus campaign that's really interesting, both mechanically and narratively. It's like, some it's, it's developers returning to the mechanics that existed in the game, like, you know, 20 years later and building more involved scenarios around those mechanics. And which now, in retrospect, I played through that campaign before I tried Front Mission 3. It is very much doing one's mechanics with an approach that is more like how the later Front Missions were structured, where you have a, a smaller team, but dig more into giving each member of the team a very well-defined role and then using those rules in an interlocking manner to solve combat puzzles. So that will be a time, and also on further, like, looking around. Like, there is, before I did the stream of three, which, in a way that was not preserved on YouTube, I attempted to stream, there's a translation patch of Front Mission 2, also for the PS1, but that is incomplete, and it turns out, like, it is as complete as it can get. Like, the remaining stuff they have not translated is, like, buried deep in the data in ways that require immense shenanigans to extract and reprocess. Right. So that actually, the translation patch, as they distribute it, has a text file containing translations of the bits that they could not change on the actual image. And that is reasonably close enough to that could be streamable just look over and mention what's being said like for the most part it's a couple of bits of intermission dialogue between 
like small specific slices of just like you know the bits between ah get geared up and then go to the field for various missions I could probably do two as well because front mission has very interesting lore for the most part it's reasonably competent like near future sci-fi war and politic drama stuff It hits a kind of Metal Gear-ish note, a more light-hearted Metal Gear. Incrementally. Or I think in particular it's a great deal broadly interesting because in particular broadly great use of filler phrases there. Uh, so, like, because they like do the sci-fi trope of it's the future and the world is like five mega alliances that conveniently you know slice up geography into big blocks so we don't have to worry about 200 interlocking countries and then almost every one of the game's plots is about one of these alliances falling apart due to internal pressures and friction and antics of yeah there's a unified all of the americas and Latin America does not really approve of this, didn't really want this to happen, and is constantly looking for ways to undermine the, like, former continental U.S. that is clearly maneuvered itself into being, you know, the dominant position within this alliance block, tries to treat it like an empire, and other people being like, nope, we are leaving. And so forth. Or like they have the, the Oceania Cooperative Union of its Southeast Asia and Australia and Japan forming a mega alliance. What a weird combination of countries. And then Front Mission 3 is about like, yeah, that's sabotaging itself right now. That's immediately, brutally going to fracture along political lines. Eventually, just completely ignore that these uh, five mega alliances exist at all if they ever got to Front Mission 6. It's just a bunch well, of they, countries again. They just keep rearranging themselves out of convenience. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, that's some good, like, some lighthearted Orwell science fiction of here are these big, permanent, ideological blocks that are actually extremely flexible and freely trade hats on a week to week basis. And like a particular like then three uh, if I, I'm not sure if it was already the case like written down before that or not but three does make sure to present the player with like the backstory of the OCU as like it started as a free trade agreement that then just kind of feature crept its way into a military alliance it was just a trade zone that overgrew and went terribly wrong Just, you know, no tariffs on rubber imports. That seems reasonable. Yeah, you know, rubber, automobiles, let me park a couple submarines in your capital, what? Yeah, just let's, let's do it. Look, I'm just saying that when I position another battalion of robots over here, th they should not be charged for the border crossing. Let's just have free travel of weaponry to fortify your border and deter the Chinese. Also, how do you feel about our senators, you know? Just maybe you want one of them. You know, we should have some kind of council where we all put people up to discuss these things and make sure we're all on the same page. You know, it's a free trade agreement council and all that. You don't have to worry about How, how do you feel about... Mm, we should also maybe consolidate what we're all doing here and just have the same government. A bit more like a federal council. Look, we have financed the creation of the Unlimited Power Bomb for peaceful applications. It has been made for good, not evil. To help mankind. To bring prosperity. Not to destroy it. It, and if, as you say, hypothetically, one of these devices could be used to delete a Russian Navy from the surface of the ocean. Well, that's just value. That's convenience. Beep. 
look, we're going to keep it for ourselves, very closely, under lock and key, heavily regulated. We're only selling five to the Eurosphere and two of the light models to the Pan-African Union. Just for deterrence. Peaceful deterrence. It's... We build a bigger weapon so that we never have to swing it. Yeah. The problem with the last web of deterrence was it wasn't angry enough. We need a larger, louder deterrent. Yeah. D deterrent's gotta be bigger than the last one we had. It just has to be. Otherwise, how does everyone know that we're serious? The armored scorpion of death will bring lasting stability to the region as long as everyone has an armored scorpion of death. Just so long as our armored scorpion of death is slightly larger. Ours and is the largest and the strongest, and we have three more than yeah. anyone else. But everyone has at least one. That's the rules. Mm -hmm. That keeps things safe. That keeps things stable. Giant scorpion death robots are there for peace. World peace. And then alongside that, so breaking away from the bit here to just talk about Front Mission again. They then also have stories that are... They kind of do the thing that I also admire in Ogre Battle, where they've built a big elaborate world to be the foundation they're telling stories in, but then the stories themselves are about specific people's motivations and adventures within this environment. That the tale that is being told is very locally and closely about somebody and their problems and their deals it's just happening along this very vivid and detailed backdrop that for the most part avoids stealing your attention and trying to sit you down and have a four hour lecture about fictional geopolitics it's just sitting out there in the lore if you want to read it and if you don't you get the cliff's note version just the little scraps that are necessary as it happens just, ah, here's Dennis. He's from the future CIA. Mm -hmm. CIFBI. SA. Dot com. He does spy things for Uncle Sam. Mega Uncle Sam. Uncle Samuel. Muckle Sam. Muckle Sam. Giga Sam. Sam Emperor. Shin Sam. The uncle who defeated Uncle Sam and earned the title Big Unk. <laughs> An uncle to surpass Metal Gear. Beep. Most powerful uncle known to man. Beep. And yeah, you just get, yep, he is a spy from over there doing spy stuff. Oh, the feds would like to work with you. Oh, the feds have betrayed you. And so forth. The uncle of the north, east, south, west, and center. Super Sam. Undefeated of the family reunion. Yeah, among other stream bland things. I'll get to front mission at some point. Uh, I mean, people, uh, Valkyrie profile has been in the queue for PS1 RPGs to visit. Oh my! I'm very Not interested sure. in that because hey, story about a Valkyrie being a Valkyrie doing the Valkyrie thing. Of uh, the All Father wants more dudes. Go find him some good dudes, some ratty boys. Being a psychopomp. Doing the mm -hmm. psychopomp thing. Recruiting. For the halls. And so forth. Yeah, that's on the list. Gonna do more of the like mainline Final Fantasies that I have not previously streamed. Many of those I would like to dive through and experience and conduct in the manner that I do. Just to add them to the roster and compare them. 
How many of those are there that you haven't done already? Uh, let's see, I've never finished playing uh, 2, which I would do the uh, GBA version of, the Dawn of Souls right. port. That makes sense. Uh, I have finished, I have played 3, I've played 3, the DS port, but not done any internet content about that. I'd probably play 3, I'd probably play 3 NES to try that out. Right. Where, oddly enough, the NES version of it is less rude than the remake, because yeah. they forgot to add a bunch of convenient things. The remake has... I, found, I streamed problems. Valkyria Chronicles in the past. It's buried somewhere in the Smash Mouth VODs, way back in the before times. Largely unenjoyable. It tried a bunch of things, but botched a bunch of things. Wound up ultimately not a fun experience, and it would... It would take some convincing to get me to either do it again or try any of the sequels. From what I understand, the first one is the best of the one of the games, mm. anyway. So, so uh, did two have a PSP version of it? I wonder. Uh, so yeah, four. I have also not done any stream content of. I'd probably do the PC port of the DS port of that because I'm interested in seeing it be more rude. And also, because four is in a weird position because of all the alternate forms of it that got made. Because you have like four as it was in Japanese when it was made, and then you have two US, which was kind of four easy type but not. And then eventually yeah. there was a like proper commercial English release of four as for proper with all of its features as the GBA remake except that also has a bunch of other bugs that kind of bork the way the mechanisms work so I think the remade 3D form is the one that would actually be the most robustly constructed even if it is also a little bit rude mode and how it redoes some of the bosses yeah I'd probably do that and then 8 Nine, and then wandering off into things that either I'd have to get a PS2 or if they have decent functional PC ports the other deeper along ones I believe 12 is getting a PC port or recently did I expect I would not do 13 or any of the other any of the post 13s yeah there's not really much reason to I've been aggressively on the fence about whether I should get into an MMO and make MMO stuff part of channel content. Because on the one hand, yeah, there is MMO stuff that does appeal to me, but on the other, there's not like any one MMO that stands out as being like, yes, that is definitely the one where I would want to get in there and do moves. And just have a time. There are none that really, like, seize that attention. Card games. Card games will be going in. There will be Eternals. There will be more card streams. Card games are good times. Eternal is reasonably constructed card game. It's got produces problems. the right level of frustration that just makes me end sessions and not think like, well, this is irreparable, throw it to the void. It's got some problems, but overall it's pretty well put together and good construct and good. And it has full draft mode, the best mode. Yes. The, old, the king's game of cards, drafting. Yeah. Drafting is the best. After looking it up, it is currently unknown whether or not Final Fantasy XII will have a PC version of its uh, re-release. However, Square has been doing that anyway as of late, so there's almost no reason to think it won't be. And then as far as other JRPG stuff, and there's there are some others that have been like, naturally, when you start doing videos in a genre, people start 
quite asking probing questions about other instances of the genre, looking for, well, would, do you want to do this other similar thing? There have been a couple of those that in response to them I've said, like, well, not, no. I hadn't thought of that before, but it could come up eventually. None of the actual titles are springing to mind at the moment. But there's been plenty of those lurking and waiting. I think that's going to pretty firmly be a category slot on the schedule for a while of just ongoing JRPG safari. Tactics Ogre, the first one, going to do cling together. Probably the PlayStation version thereof. Uh, didn't that get a PlayStation, a PSP release as well? Yes, in English? but with changes that I would find obnoxious. Okay, fair. Whereas the ways in which the original version are kind of rude are Deep. ones that I'm okay with living with. Deal with them all. Mm -hmm. Things I can account for. Because, yeah, let us cling together. It's the other ogre battle, and it's good. Yes, let us cling together. Is the subtitle of that game. It is not a... I'm not saying that as a statement. I'm not inviting people to cling. Alone or in groups. The creator of Ogre Battle has a very, very, very powerful love of Queen, the band. And thus just uses Queen songs and albums as titles and uh, chapter names in between games that they mm -hmm. make. The title Ogre Battle is actually a Queen song, so... Yeah, let us cling together. It's I brought up several times during the FF Tactics streams ways that cling is better than tactics. It's a better tactics RPG, and they did it first. Yeah, I was along when Smite did a stream of one playthrough of cling. And Kling has some very... it has a couple of branches in its plot as well, so we can get drastically different content than that if I feel like taking command there. Yeah, that's in the future. The future of the past. 100 years in the past. Hold on. That doesn't make any sense. Give me a moment. Yeah, I'll see as, far as, as far as some other things. I'm very close Beep. to the end of Dungeon Keeper 1, so I'm going to finish that. Once that is done, maybe do two? They live in that awkward space of far enough back PC games that they, like, don't possess, say, DirectX interfaces that capture software can conveniently hook into. They take that little bit of extra effort and a little bit of extra risk of shenanigans arising when you attempt to capture them, put them into video content. I'll give it an attempt. Apocalypse has not gotten me fed up yet, so that'll be continuing. Possibly eventually being seen through to its end. That'll be out of XCOMs again. Maybe just start doing something else in that slot. The XCOM retrospective is... It's run its you're course. Running, you're running out of XCOMs, is the yes, main I've, thing. I've done it. I've viewed the comms. Mm-hmm. I mean, the only thing left to do would be uh, Interceptor? No, that's terribly unstable, even in the GOG release. That just constantly crashes. It's, it's garbage. Enforcer? I already did. Co-op with Smite. You can find videos of that on Smite's YouTube. Could try to find an ancient primeval copy of Laser Squad. Maybe. But yeah, I think move on from the comms. Like, the only thing left then with the main com franchise would be if I 
if after building a new, more powerful main machine, Beep. I would then try to play COM 2 again. Yeah, waiting for Xenonauts 2 to come out. Once that's done, that's getting streamed to hell and back. That is getting explored deeply and thoroughly. Phoenix Point, when that comes out, I may explore that as well. That is intriguing. But yeah, otherwise, I think I might free up that time slot to explore other genre or thing. Like, I need to create space to put minis back into. I could pull... I could... I could dive back into the grog bin. Hmm. Because, like, I did also do the one stream playthrough of, like, over the course of a couple of weeks. I did a Grigsby. I did a Civil War. The files are still sitting around. I have never put them to YouTube. Because I keep meaning to, like, think... I look at them and think, I should make, like, an AAR summary of this. Rather than just putting... 50 hours of Raw Grigsby, or however long it was, probably more like 10, 20, 12, 40, 8, 2, 1 Grigsby. Keep meaning to do something with that footage. But it exists though, and it was done, and I could. I could war between states again, or procure further Grigsby, go for, like, full Grigsby, get war in the east, or war in the west, or war in the pacific, get the hexagons in action. Uh, it remains unknown what is wrong with Hoi 4, it is still in a state where it crashes after, like, half an hour. That's or at least was as of the last time I did testing of it, like, a week or two ago. Other patches have occurred, I continue to probe and see if the problem resolves itself or not. When you finish up your Stellaris game, if you ever wanted to do some more of it, we should do just a two-person multiplayer game of it. Yeah, we could probably reliably have two-folk co-op schedule yeah. well. I enjoy Stellaris' multiplayer quite a lot, multi -space. actually, so... I would be super down. Oh yeah, I have two lines of that display devoted in my old time because I am both, that is both my personal best and ranked first among your friends who have put in a score for Desert Bus Roundabout. I wonder if, there, if after you crash or whatever you can check to see the entire list of all your friends and their scores. Last I saw, only only one, I think, of the French set. Yeah, Crusader Kings has added all kinds of additional shenanigans. With the Wizard DLC, the Secret Society DLC. The be a cultist and get up to antics. Paradox just continues to put out pretty good stuff that is not Victoria 3. One of these days, Johan. You can't hide from it forever. Top hats, monocles, steam engines.
I would accept if they jumped directly to Victoria 4 and never explained where the missing number went. That'd be a solid plan. Then I would both have a new Victoria and be able to continue complaining that there is no Victoria 3. That's the best of both worlds. That's the best possible timeline relating to the product. I am disinterested in most of the huge overhaul mods that exist for para-games. They are often of the sort that are the unpleasant kind of over-detailed. Yeah, like the right. ones that insist on accurately recreating every single internal political boundary of the Holy Roman Empire. Including Wait. creating provinces that are non-contiguous. There is a certain level of micromanagement that is tolerable. And it's different for every every person, and a lot of those go extremely deep because they are asking for as much as possible. I recently finished a game of Slars where I kind of tested to see exactly how far I was feeling about how much micro I would be allowing myself to do, and it was 24 core planet systems. There are those who love that detail, and I do not begrudge you for enjoying what you do. Dine on. Everyone needs more pasta water. It but is, I find it largely unnecessary. It Unless it is magic. pasta water. Where pasta I am also water. I, I do need to record more chapters of the campaign main, of the North Africa manual. That has been slowly getting released in audio form to to patrons on on the Patronio, gotcha. Patronus, Patronimbus, and I will eventually, once I have assembled enough of those, make video formats thereof. Although again, is that being in a being a patron fueled and. Uh, Really, also kind of kind of beloved effort to go about documenting campaign for North Africa and all its intricacies. That's going to be effortful. That's going to be produced to some degree. So that I would expect that to take a fair amount of time to get those assembled. I would want those to look good and feel good. Pasta water is liquid magic. Just remember, this game is actually really easy and simple and quick to learn. Please don't, please stop running away. No, stop, wait, listen to me. Just open the book. Read for a hot second, please. The best way to learn the game is to just sort of start playing organically. Now here's a list of definitions you will need. I put organically in scare quotes, just in case, of legal action. Do not Wait. attempt to memorize the rules. Here are the rules you must memorize before you begin. I'm appreciative of all these names that have been beeping their way into the uh, into the follower register as we conduct the migration. I've not been reading most of them because the way that I have things laid out right now, unfortunately, the only line of sight I have on that notification is quite small in like the preview in OBS. Moving over to this system has created like three extra dashboards I need to keep track of, and I haven't finished sorting out how I will arrange them on the screen in order to keep access to that information. We'll probably at some point, at the tail end of the move, spend a span of time perusing the codex that is assembled.
not helped by the fact that for all of this time I have been streaming with a single monitor setup, which creates much more intense constraints compared to if I had even a tiny secondary screen attached to this system. Which would be difficult to orchestrate out of just sheer desk space for the most part. I suppose there is a TV in this room. I could run appropriate cable over and you have that also serve as a spare monitor. But that would carry its own inconvenience. It's it's perpendicular to my field of view. Furniture would have to be arranged. The most devious puzzle of all. When are we gonna get a desert bus MMO? Yeah. That's smart right there. Like truck simulator, but it's just one road. You sign in, you get on, you drive. Beep. Convoy. That's firmly on course to contesting that PB. Yeah. This is a good half hour remaining. A little bit more, but... For the nth time, I will reiterate, this is not the run. This is surely not the run. Success is impossible. Wink. Nudge. My rival may rest assured that they will go undefeated this day. There is no way that some nobody from the Smash District would ever defeat them, let alone hope to take on the champ.
Uh, tip jar link should be operational if you scroll down below the stream. There is an image of a powerful brew. That should be linked up to the necessary infrastructure. I will in time program the robot to brandish the relevant URL for convenience. A convenient bot. What would an inconvenient robot be? Just think about that. Robots are necessarily tools of convenience. The only question is if they convenience good or evil. Yes. Beep. If any of the necessary machinery is not yet operating properly, all due apologies to those who would wish to engage it will be sorted out in time. It is the first day. It's been a long time since that incident. I suppose one of the fundamental inconvenient machines would be the device that reverses the function of another device. That's fair. Any machine that is designed to negate or reverse the utility of another. Nightbot has many beeps. Many beeps for many seasons. What mysteries lurk within the bot song remains one of the many unsolved marvels of the science. Uh, the beep sample that is being used for the notification up there is actually, if uh, Dictron, you have uh, you have access to a beep command. Oh, do I? For the robot that it does not map to anything in the stream layout or anything that is technology that is well down the road to attempt to implement. But if you just, if you or anyone else possessing moderatorial authority instructs the robot to, uh, to beep, you know, in, exclaim mark beep, it will elaborate. I see. 
those beeps. Your gold is always welcome here. Ah, oh, yeah. Nice! Button is operating. That gold is welcome. Let me meander over to the relevant dashboard. Be careful. Keep the distracted your driving road. ensues. Beware! Eyes on the road, friend. Eyes on the road. Eyes on the road, even if Quadrophrenic is willing to throw a healthy five of Canada Dollar. Which aside, I suppose, would merit a bit of a, a branding note. I, I am setting all of the machinery for tip processing to Canada Dollars, despite most standard internet business occurring in America Dollars. So, when you move to place money in that jar, the number that reaches me will be, like, on average about 30% larger than the number that you choose to place in the bin. So you can feel like you're doing more with less. Numbers are very different in Canada. They are similarly appreciated. Uh, I believe how it will work is you will enter the number that you wish in Canada Dollar, and then you will be billed the appropriate amount in whatever currency your actual equipment is set to. I think that's how it is. I've never attempted to tip myself. That seems a little counterproductive. Yeah, Sam. I too have never attempted to tip myself. Is that the new cool thing that the teens are doing? I'm not sure. The new meta? Are these are the basic forms of the notifications that I just have in place for now. I'll go about creating more elaborate tiers and layers and interlocking, you know, noisemaker gags. To a degree that I feel appropriately aligns with the usual tone of content. Mm -hmm. serene moment of stability just going forward finding the precise mark I'm thinking about it now, part of how it might even work is it might be like changing where the dead zone is. It might be like gradually sliding the neutral position around for the analog stick. Sometimes it seems like it actually starts to pitch more aggressively towards the edge.
Yeah, we're uh, we're within 23 minutes of PB now. We've, we've had some good RNG on this run. Very effective. If too much of this grass spawns in the wrong positions, you start to get a bit of lag. It can be difficult to compensate for. Very careful, in-depth frame management involved in the desert. Desert speed. Also managed to have some pretty good uninterrupted segments of limo speed. Setup for that can be a little inconsistent, but when you do pull it off, it uh, locks in pretty effectively. Saves you a lot of time. Well worth the investment. Your gold is always welcome here. Ah, uh, Marathian. Putting in a healthy all hail. That's another number I'm planning to acknowledge with uh, future donation records. For now, all gold is welcome. Mm -hmm. In service of our dark lord. Cash for goats. The ritual. The prophecy. Yeah, for the any percent run, you skip all the rest stops, all the bathroom breaks, every restaurant, every drive through every diner. None of those are necessary just for completion. Oh yes, definitely, there will be some appropriately measured degree of further spectacle for noticeably large numbers. Numbers of all slices are appreciated, but some numbers are quite vast. If anything, as far as, like, business numbers that I'd be interested in trying to leverage aggressively, broadening viewership holds more value to me. Like, more viewers, more visibility, that's a feedback loop that keeps itself going, and the more people who are taking in a work, the fewer of them need to contribute to it in order to attain business numbers. And also, the less is asked of any one of them. Though also, at the terrible blood price of having a very large viewership means that chat rooms will inevitably devolve into senseless noise. Exchange of one value for another. Never created or destroyed.
Yeah, who knows, though? Perhaps this time will be different, and I will be able to create an audience of 10,000 well-behaved, functional conversationalists. Carefully curated folks who have good points speak with words. Words in appropriately moderated numbers of shapes. Don't feel bad about missing out on things that happen out of line with your time zone. Mine's a time zone unto himself. Fifteen minutes to personal best. The pursuit of greater number. Beep. Also, a great benefit when I do permit myself to uh, drive distracted for the relatively simple nature of the cyber driving here. I only need awareness of a small portion of the screen to recognize when button must be, well, when stick must be operated, when direction must be nudged. Could return to Kerbal. Space is good times, and it has been some time since I went to space.
I also always appreciate when I'm doing this, that it's very easy to see the edge of the road. They did not extend the road model far enough back to be sure that you would always be looking at road. And that's not like a quirk that emerges with the, the bizarro color scheme. That is there in regular mode. Buffering Hill is a tragic place to be. In time, when the account attains greater features, there will be quality options. Ways to surpass the quality on display at this very moment before your eyes. The angles the car ends up moving at are pretty nice. They're just, just subtly wrong. You're just engaged in the most low energy drift. Beep. Getting up there. Still got that move. hasn't taken too long to rediscover and reverse engineer some of the old tech. Comfortable hand positions. Proper digit priority.
staying mindful of the frame rounder. Soon as now. Soon as here. Soon as what we are. Soon as where we live. Soon as all around us. Six minutes to personal list. That would probably work if you had some spaces. There you go. Like that's the kind of formatting safeguard they'd use to keep you from accidentally putting emotes in the middle of words that contain them. Just looking for the full text of the emote as a token. Properly separated from its surroundings. Yeah, as I went over two hours ago, jump ship is a little inaccurate and disingenuous. I was here before, then left, and now I've returned to town. Rejoining the others who did the same. And the few who never left. There was a time, long ago, where, the, at least for me, first there was Ustream. Ustream existed. You could stream games to it way back in far off early days. And I did a little bit of primeval hobby streaming at Ustream. Then Twitch emerged and was okay, and folks moved to Twitch and did Twitch things. Beep. Beep well. Beep. Beep. Got a bit of a wave going. Uh, to reiterate, as can reasonably done, as it's been two and a half hours since that incident where I explained the incident. Uh, Twitch was not good three years ago. Twitch was pretty garbage in a lot of ways. Twitch had, yeah, a full minute of stream delay sometimes, and that was completely unusable. Whereas Hitbox had, like, two or five second delay at worst, and Hitbox had chat embedding of images, which is a thing Twitch still does not do. The only feature I will Beep. not... The, the only feature I will miss, the only feature that I leave behind, sadly. Yeah, no links for now. Don't, don't links. Someday I will permit the robot to permit small select numbers of people to post links.
abide by the beeps. Oh yeah, three years ago, Twitch was kind of awful. Now it's not. It's pretty alright. And the gang is all here, so there you go. Which is the word? Yes, please, respect the rebranding. Hitbox is in fact no more. The hitbox is dead. Long smash the cast. Neither Holy Roman nor a smash cast. And to reiterate, as it's been two and a half hours and he is now 16 seconds short of my PB. Soon. Four, three, two, one. There it is. We are now breaking new ground. The future begins. However, this is still not yet the run. Yes, this is Roundabout. This is a specific minigame in Roundabout that is a remake of Desert Bus. Infamous long range road travel endurance game. Beep. In which I have engaged for two and a half hours here on Day of the Move. Back to Twitch. Beep. Uh, broad supplies in a Fiesta run where you have so far all with it. I usually end up with like 10 of each. That's usually a fair enough supply of rods. I mean, in particular, the fact that you do have regular old attack wizards in there means that after a certain point, the rods will have comparable or better use just holding them for the buff to your regular attack spells than for shattering them. At this time, only those with mod privileges may instruct the robot to anything. The machine lives by its own rules. Beep. You know what, with two and a half hours into this run, I'm just gonna reach over out of the window here and split the recording. Be forewarned, if you are watching this in post, there will be a brief discontinuity in the YouTube release thereof. There will be a gap. 
I am rendering the recording of this run inadmissible for purposes of record submission on very so at some point that story can be ruminated. For now I'm gonna split this recording.